Hello and welcome to Live with the Pricing Lady, the podcast. I'm Janine, your hostess, and we are so happy to have you here with us today. This show is all about helping you build a more sustainably profitable business. We talk about the tactics and strategies of pricing and how they can help you grow, build, optimize, and optimize your business. So let's tuck right in. And first, let me welcome Rachel Madorsky. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Janine. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you here today. We are going to be talking about pricing, but maybe from a little bit of a different perspective than I have with some of my guests. So those of you who are watching us live, welcome. You're really going to enjoy this. And for those of you watching later on, I'm sure you're going to find some great little golden nuggets here. Rachel, why don't we start with a few rapid fire questions? And I always start off with, where are you joining us from today? I am joining you from Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. I was only in Austin once, but I enjoyed it very much. It's a fun place. (laughs) Yes. Excellent. So second question is, what is your superpower? My superpower is being able to tell the truth with love and give people permission to say yes to themselves. Ooh, I like that. It's not always easy to tell the truth, is it? Especially not with love. (laughs) Sometimes that can be quite the challenge. Oh, excellent. I look forward to talking more about what you do and how you work with people. But before we get to that, I'm curious, what's one interesting thing that many people don't know about you? You might be looking for something deeper, but the thing that occurs to me is that it has taken me 18 years to say yes to my husband having a dog. (laughs) (laughs) I was so resistant for 18 years, and now we have a dog, and her name is Franny, and we're completely in love. Excellent. That's So why, why did it take 18 years? I don't, I, like, I love animals, but I just, it just felt like a dog was just going to be too much. I've always had cats. We still have cats. I just, mm-hmm. I, it's so funny 18 years later, now that we have Franny, I don't even know what the problem was, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I must've been a control freak. I don't know, but we have a doggy and we love her and she's the best. Very interesting. Well, that's, that's excellent. I'm sure he's very happy as well. <laughs> Dave is very happy. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. So why don't you tell us for a moment a little bit about what you do and what value your clients get from working with you? I am a psychotherapist and an executive coach. And what I do for people is help them create more wealth, peace, and ease by giving themselves everything they ever wanted in life now. And I specifically work with ambitious, soulful leaders. Okay. I love that. And what value, how would you describe the value that they get from from finding what you just described you helped them find? I think for all of us, myself, Mm -hmm. clients, everyone I know, we were pursuing things because we think once we get the thing, we're going to have some other thing, right? There's Mm -hmm. always a there. And the value is that you don't have to wait. Like you don't have to wait until your income changes. There's no waiting needed. And Mm -hmm. so the value is instead of waiting forever to have the things we want, we can actually have them now. Okay. Interesting. I like that. Very interesting. So why don't we head back to the very beginning when you started your business. What led you to start your own business? I always wanted to help people. I knew that's something I wanted to do. I also wanted to be an actor. And so I would flow secretly between these two things. I love improv comedy and I love helping people. And so the improv would be on one side and the helping people would be on the other. And I got a master's. I went through all the process to become a therapist. Mm -hmm. And eventually, not long after I became a therapist, I was a depressed therapist, which is not a great thing to be. (laughs) And I took an improv class. I fell in love. And I knew from that moment on that I wanted to have a business that brought 
real pleasure and joy to the people I get to serve. Oh, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. That's a. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way by anyone, but I think that's um, it's. Uh, Noble sounds kind of like a silly word to use there, but it's a very it's a very exciting motivation to have for your business. Yeah, I can see that really driving everything that you do and and how you serve your clients. Super. I think another thing I'll just add to Janine mm -hmm. that I wanted to bring is that I think a lot of us are indoctrinated with this idea of if you really want to help someone, then you're not supposed to be interested in the profit or the money. Mm -hmm. And one of the paradigms I like to break for everyone I get to work with is that we can have both. You're allowed to love money. I like really breaking away all the shame and secrecy around money mm -hmm. and, and actually connect it with being in service and pleasure that they all actually get to go together. Wow. Wow. That's, I, I deal so much with people and I'm guessing you do as well then on this relationship with money and how it influences, not just, you know, your ability to fill the coffers and, and whatever, but it influences everything that you do and everything that people do, especially when it comes to the pricing, it really influences their behavior around pricing. And I would guess whether you have a job or you have your own business, it, it, it infiltrates, if you will. Um, if you have, um, let's say if you have, um, what do I want to call them? Uh, challenges in, you know, when your relationship with money, it really infiltrates everything you do. A hundred percent. Our our relationship with money, our beliefs about money, our beliefs about what we're allowed to have mm -hmm. affect every aspect of our business, whether we're conscious of it or not. I mean, right. we can be giving the most incredible value, but if we have some secret belief back there that we don't deserve it, or if it's mm -hmm. fun to do, we shouldn't make a lot of money, then we're actually going to block our ability to receive. Right. Right. And I think it's also interesting because what I get a lot of times from like practitioners and therapists is they get um, some not so friendly messages from the marketplace that they should, how dare they charge for what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes it's even reinforced externally uh, that, you know, that self-belief that someone may have that they shouldn't or earn money for what they do because they're serving others. It gets reinforced forced from external sources as well. A hundred percent. And yeah. I think even if we were to follow that back into where that comes from, you know, we, we can be critical of others mm. having something when mm. we're consciously or unconsciously critical of ourselves having that same thing. Right. Right. Interesting. Ooh, I like this already. <laughs> <laughs> so let me also then ask you, when you first stepped out into your, your on your own in your business and you had to set a price and start communicating and talking to people about what you charge, what was that like for you? It was wild. I mean, I when I when I really moved into private practice, I was working in a corporate setting. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to charge anything in the beginning, just anything. Mm -hmm that um, it, it, it almost didn't matter what the price was at the beginning. I think for a lot of us as entrepreneurs, it's so exciting to make that move from working from someone for someone else to working for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the first time I raised my fee significantly. And I just want to say that for, for anyone listening, raising your fee significantly doesn't always mean a huge dollar amount increase. Significantly can also just mean how it feels mm -hmm. internally. And I think the biggest, most impactful raise might have been from 110 to 150. <laughs> it's so small now, but at the time, 150 felt huge to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was, and it was very empowering. Mm -hmm. So you felt empowered by it. Did it, did it make you nervous at all? It did. And but, uh, go ahead. 
Yeah, I was going to say, because there's different kinds of nervous. There's like, um, so Tara Mar in, in one of her, in her book, Playing Big, she talks about two types of fear. The one one that is like, makes you want to you know, grow, go and crawl into a corner. And one that's very expansive and exciting. And so I'm, I asked the question, but I realized maybe I should be more descriptive. I mean, was it, if you felt nervous about it, was it a good nervousness or a bad nervousness or... Yes, I love the way you describe that. I have a similar way that I th- our fees, our ideal fees stretch both the deliverer of the service and the client. And it was that very exciting kind of fear stretch. Yeah. So what do you mean by stretching the client? We we typically put a value on how much money we're committing to something. You know, mm-hmm. when, when people say you get what you pay for, it isn't even necessarily the service. Mm-hmm. It's the self that we bring to the service when we commit a certain amount of money. So if there's nothing at stake, the likelihood of me showing up for myself is lower mm-hmm. than when the stakes are higher. And that has to do with how much we charge. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've heard that put in... In other ways, more around the commitment that people give when they've when they've, you know, risked a little bit more. Let's say I'm not sure if that's the right way to put it, but when they've paid a little bit more and it feels a little bit riskier, then they're a bit more committed to the process. Is yes, that what you mean? A hundred percent. And we okay. listen in a different way. We listen. It's so mm-hmm. easy. I mean, I can. It's so easy for me to fall into a know-it-all perspective, and if we already know, then what? what new gets to come in, what value gets to come in. But when we pay more, we're a little, we're listening different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also as the giver of a service, as the entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. I mean, my fees are very different now and the work I do is very different now. But for us as someone providing a service, Mm -hmm. I believe it's ideal for that number to stretch us too so that we show up our most excited, most alive version of ourselves thrilled to give whatever Mm -hmm. it is we're going to give the excellence that we're going to give. Excellent. That was my next question. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, no, that's okay. (laughs) Because it's important for people to understand what you mean on both sides by, you know, stretching themselves because um, I think that when when you set when you set your prices and it doesn't feel a little bit uncomfortable for you when you're playing it safe with your pricing, um, then you don't really you don't know what's possible for yourself or for your clients. And so, in in many ways, you could maybe I'm stretching it a bit here, but I'm going to say it anyhow. In many ways, you know, when you do set a a price that is a stretch for both of you, it actually is going outside the comfort zone and enabling you to serve your clients better in some ways. I think that's a hundred percent true, Janine. That's, that's real. Yeah. Thanks for, for sharing that with us. So let me ask you, what was the biggest pricing challenge that you faced over the years? Moving into six figure offers and multiple Mm -hmm. six figure offers. Mm -hmm. Um, The challenge is around not connecting how hard we work Mm -hmm. with the value of what we bring. What do you mean? I think we live in a world, and and hopefully this is starting to change. There's enough people now shifting this paradigm where our value is connected to how busy we are, Mm -hmm. our pricing should be related in some way to how difficult the task is. Mm -hmm. And we have those beliefs both as consumers and deliverers of service. But what's actually true is that it's okay for it to be profoundly delightful and easy to give profound value Mm -hmm. at, at a fee that feels incredibly empowering to both, again, the client and Mm -hmm. the therapist or the coach or the whoever the deliverer is of the service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I can see. And so how did you how did you come across that being an issue for you? And what did you do differently? So if somebody else were at this phase where they're making a big leap like that, you know, what what can they do differently based on your experience? That's an excellent question. I do want to say by leap, I didn't go from one hundred and fifty dollars to <laughs> multiple six <laughs> figures. Um, we should probably touch base about that, about like when and how to do that. <laughs> Um, but it's, um, there's, there's a few different pieces. There's the inner work. Everything to me is like an inner game and an outer game. So the right. inner piece is who would I need to be in order to deliver life-changing value in a way that's easy and pleasurable for me and my clients. Mm -hmm. That's a long way to say it, but it's about our identity, who, who we're being, how we calibrate to receive at a higher level than we've ever received before. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the work is inner work. And I'll, I'll reference a book here that I highly recommend, which is The Big Leap by Gay okay. Hendricks. Okay. Hopefully everyone's read it. If you haven't read that, make that, make that the next book you read. And okay. to me, one of the reasons is because there's a certain amount of good that we're all comfortable with. We're all comfortable with our a certain level, each of us, whether it's a, a number in the bank account, a number of how happy we're allowed to be in our relationship. There's a certain spot that feels normal, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And as we grow past that, it starts to feel uncomfortable. We have all these questions, knowingly and unknowingly. Will I Will I abandon my parents if I make more money than them? Will I not feel a part of the group that I feel I belong to? Now, all these things come up about our identity. And doing this work, to me, is essential for raising our fees with integrity and being able to hold more money and flow more money and help our clients hold more money and flow more mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So a big part is the inner work we do. Okay. Okay. And then the outer work is, I'm sure, I, I know you have a high value on this, which is providing high value, mm -hmm. making sure that what you're giving is excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then practicing. One of the things that helped me was literally practicing saying these new fees that, that a long yeah. time ago would have sounded crazy. Practice, practice your new fee out loud. Even... Yeah. No matter what the new fee is, if there's any discomfort, make it fun, practice saying it out loud and interchanging it with something very mundane, like, could you pass the salt? My fee is $650,000 or whatever it is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> or $150, but right. alternate it with something simple so mm -hmm. that your body, even though it sounds funny, but we do, I do that and I help my clients do that so that our body actually calibrates to that. This is okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the practice piece is so important and it's highly underestimated or undervalued whichever way you want to look at it. I think that people don't take the time to do those little practices often enough, especially when it comes to their pricing. It's also like with how, you know, when some you were at a networking event and somebody says, um, well, you know, hi, I'm Janine and uh, Rachel, what do you do? And if you don't practice how you want to be ask, answering that question, then you kind of go, oh, well, <laughs> Yes. And kind of stumble your way through it, or you deliver something like, oh, I'm just a coach, or, you know, something that isn't like the best version of what you could be doing at the time. And, and just that little bit of practice, whether it's with the number that you're charging, or with how you introduce yourself to new people, makes a huge difference in people's perception of you as a potential partner to either, you know, work with or use your product or, or whatever it is that it, you are providing or, or delivering to them, right? So true. So true. Yeah. I still have to practice. I've been doing this work for 20 years, but what I do <laughs> continues to evolve and I right. need to find the words and say the words in a way that feels authentic and integrity and real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I always find, and maybe I shouldn't confess this, but I'm going to confess it anyhow. Oh, so I have one offer and it always cracks me up because for some reason, I cannot remember the price of it. I always give a different price than the one that I've set. And so a couple of weeks ago, I was like, okay, let's just change the price because obviously there's something in me that is just saying, okay, it needs to be here, not here. But it was funny because like for the last year and a half, I kept finding myself giving, you know, when I spoke it out, it came out as a price different than what I had actually put on it. It was so, it's so funny. I love that story, Janine. Thank you for sharing it. First of all, I love that you listen to yourself and that you're like, well, if this is what I'm saying, let me do that. And it's likely that it will move to the price you intended once this level becomes so normal and so comfortable and so integrated. Yeah. And I would, I would also recommend that to anyone who wants mm. to raise or change their fee set a fee that does feel good. That's just a little bit of a stretch that helps you come alive. You don't have to make giant leaps. Right. Actually, it was the other way around in this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How powerful is that? It wasn't a big difference, but I, it kept coming out wrong. And then I'd be like, oh, wait, was that the right? And then and then I found myself, okay, well, doing what I you know, coach people not to do, which is not be confident in the message you're delivering. I was like, okay, well, if I need to be confident, I need to just make it what I am keep saying and telling people <laughs> so that amazing. I don't guess, you know, second guess myself along the way. I and love I think it. it's, it's important also, you know, I, nobody likes to confess the mistakes they make. It's never pleasant, but it's important also for people to understand that, you know, just because I'm a specialist in this area or you're a specialist in your area doesn't mean that we don't have to work at it sometimes and that we also don't make those mistakes along the way. A hundred percent, except I would say from my perspective, I don't, I don't even, I don't see that as a mistake. I see that as like a divine, divine intervention that you're accidentally <laughs> saying a higher fee because that is the true energetic match yeah. for the service you're providing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny. It's so funny. Okay. Let me see. Um, why don't we, what's okay. One more question before we start wrapping this up. Okay. So what's, what's one thing or one pricing tactic or strategy that you think has served you well over the years? I'm going to share one that I think is really out of the box that I don't think mm -hmm. a lot of people are told and it has really served me when I'm looking at my life. Mm -hmm. And that is to first create the structure, the schedule that is my ideal schedule, exactly when I want to be working, how I want to be working, what hours those are. Mm -hmm. And then also take the time to set a money goal. What, what is mm -hmm. the amount I would love to make? Mm -hmm. And then put those things together how much time do I want to give? How, how much do I want to work? How much do I want to make? And mm -hmm. discover my pricing from there. Mm -hmm. Because my time is valuable, your time is valuable, and right. actually find the number from that place and then make good on it by delivering something incredible that surpasses even that amount. Mm -hmm. It's great that you bring that up. I have a toolkit on my website and one of the tools... <laughs> actually does just that. You put in some things about the number of days and hours and things like that you're going to be working and then your hourly rate and you can see very quickly um, what's possible. Yeah. Um, and then adjust from there. So I'll put that in the show notes for everyone if they want to take Rachel's advice and have a little tool to help them along the way. I want to say something about that, Janine, that first of all, that's yeah. so brilliant that you have it and so generous that you're able to give that. And I also want to speak to, I don't actually consider that I'm trading my time for dollars. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs, you know, we, we, we don't want to do that. This is more for yourself to know mm -hmm. what it is, mm -hmm. what your time is worth to you. It's mm -hmm. still not exactly, you're not trading time for dollars. You still mm -hmm. want to charge for the result and the value that's received. Absolutely. I totally 100% agree with that one. I would say time is just the wrapper your services are delivered in, right? Yes. 
Cool. Thank you very much. So I'm going to start wrapping, wrapping this up. What's one thing that you would like people to take away from our discussion today? That self-love, I mean, we didn't really get into it that much. I mean, one of the okay. things I am as a self-love strategist, which I know mm -hmm. might sound kind of foo-foo, but what I want people to know is that you absolutely can love your pricing, love your work, love your clients, love yourself, mm -hmm. repeat. I mean, this really is a scientific strategy, not just a spiritual mm -hmm. soft strategy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. I love that sequence of phrases there. I don't remember them, but I <laughs> will make sure that they are on a quote or something because they're, it's, it's so true that so much of what you do, you know, let me put it this way. When I started my own business, I'm sure people told me up front, but I, it never resonated with me. Um, but, you know, having your own business is a personal development journey, not a career development journey. And I never really understood that when I got into it. Uh, but I've learned that definitely along the way. And I think part of that is, you know, the loving yourself is sort of, you know, what is, is what you need to lead with in a sense. I yeah. love that you're saying that, Janine. It's so, mm -hmm. it's so true. I mean, our work grows us Yeah. in, in every way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What is the best business advice you've ever been given? Allow everything, accommodate very little. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. <laughs> Allow everything, accommodate very little. That's, I think those are some words to live by for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot we could say about it, but one, I mean, there's so many ways where we take things personal. Yeah. And if we can step back and allow everyone to have their full experience, their opinions, their thoughts, their feelings, mm -hmm. make space for all of it mm -hmm. and accommodate very little, meaning be a stand for what's mm -hmm. what you value, what's important to you mm -hmm. and yeah. your time and your wishes and your desires and your dreams. Yeah. Mm, very important, very important things to live by. So I know that you have a book out, coming out. I do. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, thank you. We'd thank love to you hear more. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book. I wanted to, here's the book. It's called How to Love Yourself in Less Than a Week and Also for the Rest of Your Life. I wrote this book because I discovered as an entrepreneur that self-love really is a massive thread that increases our capacity to give and our capacity to receive. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be fun and light and easy. And I also wanted there to be a tangible way to love yourself. I, I, mm -hmm. I was told many, many years ago by someone, you know, this thing will resolve itself if you would love yourself. And I remember thinking I, at the same time, got the secret to the universe with no instructions. You hear that all the time, but what does it mean? So I wrote a book about it. Um, it's a, it was a number one bestseller on Amazon, and it's about to come out in hardback, um, and it's out now. And so I hope you'll give, gift it to yourself. It's, uh, it's also for business. There's actual business tips in there as well. Uh -huh. Super excellent. Well, we'll be sure to put the link to that in the show notes. And Rachel, one last question. Where can people reach out and find you? People can find me at my website, which is rachelmadorsky.com. Mm -hmm. There is free resources there. There's all sorts of stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. And I would love to connect and support. Super. So we'll put the link to her website and other links to social media in the show notes as well for everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Rachel. I have really enjoyed our conversation. It's given me so much to think about. <laughs> Thank you, Janine. Thanks. And also thanks for being so open and real with us as we talk about this. Thank you really for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. And to those of you who are out there joining this with us, enjoying this with us, I want to say thank you for being here today. I also wanted to mention we've been having over the past, say, month or so, quite the discussion over on LinkedIn about a very common question that I get from people. And that question is, should you put your prices on your website? 
So I have created a guide just for all of you to help, to help you figure out the answer to that question for your business. And you can go grab a copy of that over at thepricinglady.com backslash goodies. You'll want to download the pricing guide. You'll find it right there when you go to that link. We'll put that in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to have you here with us. I wish you all the best, everyone. And as always, enjoy pricing. <music>